Burn, baby, burn. Muzzle burn, to be precise. So, muzzle burn. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take this uh, spare piece of an Imperial Knight and we're going to give it some muzzle burn. Basic method for this is quite easy. Uh, what you need to do is paint it up. This was based in Lead Belcher. It's had a null oil gloss shade. It's been dry brushed with Necron compound and then each of the little uh, indentations had some more null oil, just a normal one because that's the one I had at hand at that point, uh, put into it to, to darken them right the way down. So what we're going to do, as you see we've got five shades. We've got the Seraphim Sepia, Reclam Flesh Shade, uh, the Drucky Violet, Draconoff Night Shade and the Null Oil. So what we're going to do is essentially use these not as shades, more as glazes. So you don't want to have too much on your brush at any one time. It's relatively straightforward. So hopefully this will work okay. You can see what I'm doing. So we're starting off with the Seraphim Sepia. And you don't want too much on your brush. It's not like putting a wash on. And then all you're really doing is almost glazing it on. It's really going to have minimal effect at first. But hopefully you can see that browning down a little. And I'm going to do this side of it in a distinct band. So a band of Seraphim Sepia, a band of Reichlin Flesh Shade, sort of bleeding into it, Drucky Violet, Dragon of Night Shade, if you see what I mean, individual bands. And then on the other side, see, you don't want to be pulling it the way that is there, but if you just keep it moving. So yeah, you can sort of see what I'm going for there. So you're not so much shading it as painting it. To so this side, however, I'm going to do the whole thing. Just to see the difference between the two methods. So obviously this one will be a little bit faster because you're literally, well, you're not painting it on, but you know what I mean. And you sort of want to feather the ends of it. You can already see the basic effect coming through there, hopefully, on the camera. It looks a little bit burnt, but... So I'm only going to do the sides, by the way. There's no point in doing the whole thing, so... Just give that another little... So this one's a bit redder, a bit browner. So, a little bit on your brush. You don't need to put too much on. And then all we're really doing is sort of blending this into the seraphim sepia a little so this is one of those effects that is very easy to do and very subtle but looks good right so on this side we want to start a little bit further down than the seraphim sepia was but literally just bathe it on there, blend it in, try to feather it out. I mean already that's looking very good. We don't want it to look very good, we want it to look perfect. Or at least good enough. <laughs> oh shut up phone. Oh shut up. <sighs> My wife's been let loose on Facebook again, I guarantee it. Anyway, so uh, there we've got our blended side and there we've got our banded side so next up a drooky violet live it on your brush you don't need much and start to blend that in and then again on the other side you just want to avoid it pulling really but you'll see I mean even with just those three colors dying now the effect we've got here on the blended side is very nice indeed and you can try pulling just a little bit into the the other tones hold that thought where were we are we done the other side and yeah, we'll add a little bit more here it's relatively straightforward too. It's just blend the purple into the browns. A little 
little bit more apparent. So you're not so much giving it a wash the way you normally would with shades. You're more painting it on and letting it blend through. Just keep it moving. Right. Now onto the. Uh, can't remember if I've done this, but another little bit won't do any harm. Because you can keep adding it all up. There's no reason to stop at all. You know, you can add it until you're happy with it. Is what you do with this. You just don't want to have too much in your brush at any one time. So there we go. I think that one's that's looking good. If it doesn't really come across in the camera, I'm a bit overexposed. Let me just drop the exposure down a tad. So hopefully you can see the effect we're getting now with the muzzle burn. So that's with the uh, full blending, and that's with the banding. So next up, we go to our blue, the Drakenhof Nightshade. If you were doing something like a, a Gatling gun or something without a flame effect, then you might want to stop at the blue. But for a flamer, you want to have the soot effect, so we're going to go for the Nelnoil Oil next. So, for now, we're going to use the uh, the blue, blending that into the purple a little. You make sure you don't want it to pull anywhere. Now we'll just do the uh, blended side. As you can see, this is a remarkably simple technique, and it takes no skill. Hence the fact I can do it. Hence the fact I can show you how to do it. All you do is you just keep going with the blue. So there is a difference, hopefully that comes across on camera, between the blended side and the band. This is the blended side, sorry. So you can see we're getting a really nice effect here. And then on the other side, it's a much more distinct effect because of the banding. But you can obviously use your brush to pull some of the blue through. And show you the difference between the two ways. This definitely looks much more burnt. This definitely looks much more neat. So you might want to do this one for like a, a Gatling cannon and this one for the flamers. So next up, after the blue, we go to black. Again, as I said, this is for the soot effects. So useful for flamers melt guns kind of things but for uh, a Gatling cannon or something you might want only the uh, the blue so all we're gonna do now is this is gonna be worked into the tip you could probably get a very similar effect to this with dry brushing but it's not something I've ever done or seen done which makes me not obviously want to try it but I'm not going to because that way lies the path of craziness and I ain't that crazy. So we might need another couple of coats of Nuln Oil here. Using the shade as a glaze. Almost. The main drawback to these is they do take a little bit longer than paints to dry. So I'll just put a little bit more on. And then let that sit for a second or two. There we have the banded side. So this is with the uh, paint, or the, not paints, shades, done in bands. So you can see you get a lovely effect. Maybe you could do it with a touch more blue at the tip, but other than that, I think that's fine. And there we have the blended one. This is where it's painted the whole remainder of the barrels. So similar effect up to you which one you prefer obviously I'm not sure there's a big difference but I like that one and I like that one so I'm either or this one's probably a bit easier because you literally just paint from the start to the tip this one you band it so yeah if you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. There's another couple of videos there you can click on. You can click on the subscribe button if you want to. Uh, like the video if you want to. Stick a comment down if you've anything to say. And in the meantime, happy wargaming. And I'll see you next time.